In this video, I will be speaking about the idea of sampling distribution. Let's start with the definition. Consider the random experiment consisting in taking a sample from a given population. This is what we usually do in statistics. And computing a statistic. Since this experiment can produce different outcomes for each of possible samples, this statistic becomes a random variable. And of course, it will have a probability distribution. This probability distribution is called a sampling distribution. For example, you can compute the sample mean of this sample. So you have a population, you compute the sample mean, the sample mean will be a statistic. For each possible sample, you are going to have different results. So this result, this sample mean that produced each of the sample is a random variable, and for sure, we will have a probability distribution. Another example could be the proportion. You can compute the proportion of a sample, and this proportion will be a random variable, and this random variable will have a probability distribution. And the same with the sample standard deviation, or whatever statistic that can be obtained from a sample. For example, if you have a normal distributed population with mean equal 10 and standard deviation equal 2. Let's say you have something like that. You have a population that is well shaped and the mean is 10 and the standard deviation is 2 and you get a sample from this population. Let's take a sample and let's see this sample is randomly selected Let's take a sample of size equal 4. So this will be the sample. So from this population, I get this number. This is 6.4, 8.6, 10.8, and 13.8. And I compute from this sample the mean. I will be starting speaking about the sampling distribution of the mean. So you need to get the mean of 6.4, 8.6, 10.8, and 13.8. Add together these four numbers and divide by 4 and you get a mean of 9.9. .9. The population mean is 10, but the sample mean is 9.9. .9. .9. The sample mean is not necessarily equal to the population mean. And you see that in the result, it could be an error. And the sampling error for the means will be the sample mean minus the population mean. So in this case, the sampling error will be 9.9 .9 minus 10 equal negative 0 0.1. Let's take randomly another sample from this population. You have 5.9, 10.2, 11.9, and 40.1. And this was another sample of size 4. If you do that, the sample mean will be 5.9 plus 10.2 plus 11.9 plus 14.1. Add together this number and divide by 4. And the answer is 10.5. And now, if we compute the sampling error, the answer will be 10.5 minus 10 equals 0 0.5. And this is an experiment that we can do many, many, many times. And for each time, we could have different answer for the sample mean. So this sample mean is a random variable. And this random variable has its probability distribution. So it will be a good idea to study the probability distribution of all these means, of all the means that can be obtained from samples of size 4. Let's state now some important propositions. The first one is the following. For any normally distributed population with mean, mu, and standard deviation sigma, the sampling distribution of the means obtained from sample of size n will be also normal. So it means the distribution of the samples means will be also normal with mean equal to the mean of the population. So the mean of all possible samples means will be equal to the mean of the population. And the standard deviation of all possible means will be the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n, the size of the samples. So it means if we have, if we extract 
samples of size n from a population that is normally distributed, the distribution of the samples mean will be also normal. And the mean and the standard deviations of these samples mean will be given by these two formulas. Now, this leads us to a very important theorem in the statistics, the so-called central limit theorem. For any population with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, so now I'm speaking about any population, not necessarily normally distributed. So for any population, regardless of the population distribution, the sampling distribution of the mean obtained from samples of size n satisfies the same two equations that are written here. So the mean of all possible means will be the mean of the population. And the standard deviation of all possible means, so the standard deviation of the distribution of the, of the samples means, will be the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. And now, if n is sufficiently large, and I say starting from n equals 30, then the sampling distribution of the mean is approximately normal. And the larger the sample, the better the approximation to the normal distribution. So this is really very important. So it doesn't matter how will be the population, how will be the distribution of the population. Anyway, the distribution of the sample mean will be also a normal distribution. Now that we know that the sampling distribution of the mean is in many cases the normal distribution, it will be a good idea to study the z-value for the sampling distribution. We know that for a normal distribution, the z-score is always the x minus mu divided by sigma, and this helps us to answer many questions related to the normal distribution. So now, for the sampling distribution of the mean, what we have is that the z value will be the mean, so each value will be a mean, minus the mean of all the means, divided by the standard deviation of the means. But we know that in many cases, for example, when the population is normal, or when the population has whatever distribution, or for whatever other distribution, if the value of n is greater than 30, there is an approximation to the normal distribution. The z value will be equal to x bar minus mu divided by sigma root of n. And it's this formula that can help us to answer many questions related to the mean. We can solve problems related to the sampling distribution of the mean in the same way that we were solving problems related to the normal distribution. As an example, we can solve the following problem. A food processing company produces french fry for fast food outlets. The distribution of the french fry length is told to be normal with a mean length of 4 inches and a standard deviation of 1 inch. What is the probability of selecting a simple random sample of 100 fries with a sample mean that is more than 4.1 inches. So the question is what is the probability that the sample mean satisfies this property? So we need to use the probability distribution of this mean. We need to, to use the sampling distribution of the mean. And we have some information. So we know that the population mean is 4 inches. So the population mean is 4 inches. We also know that the standard deviation is 1 inch. So the standard deviation is 1. And finally, we are selecting sample of 100 fries, so n equals 100. And the question is, what is the probability that the sample mean is greater than 4.1 when we select this sample? And we know also that the distribution of this variable, the, the sample mean, is a normal distribution. So we can use the technique that we use to solve a problem like this in the normal distribution. And remember, to do that, the first thing that we do is compute the z-value. And the z-value, or z-score, will be the value of the variable minus the mean of the population. And in this case, it will be the population of means. But in this case, this is actually the mean of the population of the original variable. Divided by the standard deviation, and the standard deviation of this variable 
we know that is the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. So in this case we have 4.1 is the value of the mean that we want to, to obtain. This, the question is what is the probability that being more than this. So 4.1 minus 4, that is the mean of the population, divided by 1, the square root of 100. Do that in your calculator and the answer is 4.1 minus 4 divided by 0 0.1 equal 1. This is the first step that we follow when we are solving a problem related to a normal distribution. The second step is just using Excel or use or use the, the normal distribution table to find the probabilities. Let's use first the, the normal distribution table. So this, this is the original question, probability of the mean equal, greater or equal than 4.1, but the z-score corresponding to this is 1, so this question is actually the same of what is the probability that the z-score is greater than 1. So this is the question that they are asking me. What is this area? Using the normal distribution table, the value is equal 1, so the area is 0 0.3413. The area between this 0 0.3413, that is the area corresponding to 1, remember that this this area here between 1 and the, and the mean and, and 0 in the standard normal distribution. So if we know this area, and we know that this is half of the area, this is 0 0.5, so the area that I'm looking for will be 0 0.5 minus the area in the table. Remember that the area in the table is always the, the, the area between the number and 0. So will be the probability that x bar, the mean, is greater than 4.1 is equal to the probability of z greater than 1, and this is... 0 0.5 minus the area corresponding to 1, 0 0.3413 in the normal distribution table. If you do that, the value is 0 0.1587. If you want to solve this problem using Excel, remember that Excel always computes the cumulative probability. So Excel always computes the value at the left. So if you want to do this in Excel, you need to type 1, so all the value 1, that is the whole area below the curve, minus the normal standard distribution. So you type this in the cell, don't forget in the cell, in whatever cell, you need to type equal 1 minus normal standard distribution of 1. This is the value of z. And this 1 is because this is a cumulative problem, yes? the cumulative probability of this area. So if you do that, the answer will be the same, 0 0.1587. Let's solve another question. This second question is related to the same situation, but now the question is what is the probability that this sample mean is between 4.062 and 4.1 inches? The information that we have is the same, but the question is, in math words, we do the probability that the random variable, that in this case is the sample mean, is between 4.062 and less than 4.1. Is more than 4.062 and less than 4.1. So what we need to do is find the z-score of each of these two values. Let's find the z-score of the first one. So it will be the formula of the z-score, x bar, the value of the x bar at that point will be 4.062 minus the mean of the population, that is 4, divided by 1, that is the standard deviation, divided by the square root of 100. If I do that, the answer is 0 0.62. And then get the z-score, of the second value, 4.1, that we already did it in the previous question. Eh? So it will be 4.1 minus 4 divided by 1 over the square root of 100. That is 1. The original question, that it was the random variable x bar, so the mean is between 4.062 and 4.1, have been, have been changed by the question, what is the probability that the z standard normal distribution variable z is between 0 0.62 and 
that is the value corresponding to the first number, and one that is the value corresponding to the second number. If we make a sketch of the standard normal distribution, what we have is this. So we, are, we need to look the area between 0 0.62 and 1 in the standard normal distribution. Let's take the normal distribution table and just compute the area related to 0 0.62 and the area related to 1. The area corresponding to 0 0.62 is 0 0.2324. And this area is actually the area between the number 0 0.62 and 0. So this area is actually this area here. And now the area corresponding to 1, that is, we know that is 0 0.3413, is actually the area between 1 and 0. 0 0.3413. So if we want to know the value of this area, the value of the probability that the random variable z will be between 0 0.62 and 1 will be the area between 0 and 1 minus the area between, between 0 0.62 and 1. So it will be 0 0.3413 minus 0 0.2324. And if we do that, the answer is 0 0.1089. Again, if you're using Excel, because Excel has all the area at the left of a number, Excel has the cumulative distribution, so the way to do it in Excel will be the same. You need to find the cumulative probability of 1 minus the cumulative probability of 0 0.62. So in Excel, you type normal standard distribution of 1, remember to type 1 to say that it's cumulative, minus the normal standard distribution of 0 0.62. And that obviously produced the same answer. And that finishes this video.